You might have seen all these data breaches flying around in the news and heard terms like exploits or buffer overflow being bandied around and wondered what on earth everyone was talking about. We're going to have a look here at a simple example of a buffer overflow and show how it's possible for an attacker to abuse an area designated to store some specific information to execute functionality they weren't supposed to be able to. Now, buffer overflows have been around for a, a very long time indeed. They hail back to papers like Smashing the Stack for Fun and Profit by Aleph One. They don't title papers like that anymore. Now, modern attacks get into all kinds of advanced areas. We'd have to talk about things like use after free and vtable pointer hijacking, or we'd have to deal with the mass of Microsoft mitigations and get into the likes of return-oriented programming. But generally speaking, it's advisable to walk before you jump off a building and try and fly like Superman. So let's take a look at a simple example. This is a really terrible C program that I just rolled together. And all it really does is allows the user to input a password, and if the password is correct, it reads a file, a, a sensitive file, and if the password is wrong, then it says, sorry, you fail, and exits the program. Now, it's really, really simple, but it does illustrate the point nicely. Here at the top of our program, uh, we've got char password 16. So we're just creating uh, a storage area for characters, a char array the size of 16 bytes. After that, we've got an int pass check equals zero. So we're initializing a new variable called pass check and setting it to zero in the first place. Now we're going to print out to the screen what's the secret password. Don't be put off by these backslash ends. That's just a way of putting in uh, a new line. Uh, it just makes our little simple virtual user interface here, uh, our simple user interface, easier to read. Down below that, we do a call to gets. And this is where things start to go horribly wrong. Now, the gets function is certainly deprecated and certainly a terrible idea. And you're very unlikely to run into it in modern code, uh, although the principle of the attack that we're articulating here certainly extends to things that we still see quite frequently. The gets function captures information from the user's keyboard. So anything we type that appears in the terminal will be written into password, which we allocated up here with a limited or finite amount of space. Once this process is completed, there is a, a, a process that checks whether the password is correct. This function here, get, doesn't check whether or not the information we provide will fit into this buffer. And if we provide more information than can actually be fitted into this designated area of memory, it overwrites information nearby. Unfortunately, what happens to be nearby is this pass check value. Now, overflowing the bucket, a bit like a, a real bucket where we pour more water in than we should, doesn't seem like a big deal. I mean, it's going to cause the program to crash and isn't particularly useful to the attacker other than perhaps being an irritation. But let's look at this program functionality in a little more depth and understand why this is actually a problem. We're doing a little check here. Strucomp password against password1. In other words, check if our char array contains password1. If it does, we'll end up executing this code down here, where we say correct password and set the pass check value to 1. If, on the other hand, it doesn't contain password 1, then we'll just print out you fail and we'll end up terminating the program down here. This is just a little nod to the fact that people like to choose absolutely terrible passwords. Now, this pass check equals 1 is interesting. This is saying, OK, the user guessed the password correctly, set pass check to a non-zero value, in this case, 1, which means down below we've got if pass check that now can be executed. If pass check just says, if pass check is not equal to zero, if it's set to something, then execute our code below. And down here, we're just doing a system call, and uh, we're actually, uh, a system function call, sorry. Uh, we're just calling cat to read the Etsy shadow file. Now, this isn't actually a privilege escalation. It's not doing anything particularly interesting. Of course, in a real program, this could be concerning code like an administrative function we don't want the attacker to have access to. So let's go and build our program and see exactly what the attacker can do. 
we're just going to use GCC with the no stack protector argument and simple.c. No stack protector actually removes things like uh, terminator canaries or, or an equivalent stack protection scheme depending on the operating system version uh, and compiler uh, that you are running. Um, that's actually another lesson for another day. Uh, suffice to say, it's, it's making things a little simpler for the attacker like they were in the old days uh, and we don't really need to be concerned with these more advanced concepts for the moment. So we now have a file a.out, uh, in this case a 64-bit executable that we can run. So if we run a.out, it says what's the secret password? And we can type ASD and it fails. Well, watch what happens as we try ASD, 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 ASD. Interesting. As we input a longer and longer string, all of a sudden we get that system function call to cat etsy shadow. So this is the etsy shadow file that contains all the hashes for my users on the system. So it still said you fail, it executed that branch of code, but down below the pass check was set to a non-zero value and thus run. What happened here is the gets function started writing in our ASD, 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 uh, or more conventionally, uh, when people demonstrate this, capital A, capital A, capital A. And at some point that overflowed the boundary of our 16 bytes and any other fluff that existed in between and started filling up that int that was placed into memory right next to it. When we overwrote that, that was set to a non-zero value, which meant that all of a sudden, our if pass check could execute and the functionality was unlocked. Now this is a really simple example of a buffer overflow. Often you're going to require much more precise control of memory to actually make a condition like this do anything useful. But it illustrates the point that failing to do bounds checking, making sure that you're not overwriting things you shouldn't, can be extremely beneficial to attackers. And that's why it's really important that developers pay attention to bounds checking and, of course, make sure they avoid older, deprecated and less secure functions.